Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this music, and we stop it really quick because we're afraid we're going to get sued, you know you're in for an episode of Classical Gas. This is one of our premier uh, our premier theme shows here at the bathtub. We, we, try not, we try to give you the best every week, but this is one of the premier top, this is a top echelon of theme shows on a, on a, on a bathtub, uh, smorgasbord of, of literary delights. We, uh, it's... Uh, Basically, it's, we'd look at classical literature and say, is, do we really want to, do we want to bother reading classical literature? Most of the time, we think you should. We should, you know, you know if, it's, if it's Ulysses, you're on your own. I, I, have, I, decide, I spent 10 weeks, I spent months of my life reading Ulysses. I don't know if you should bother reading Ulysses. But lots of great classics should be. I thought I'd argue it because we don't have enough, like, long projects, you know. I have all these projects going on here. You know, we're reading Trevor's and Brian Moore's books backwards, and we're reading all of Brown again. And I forget what some of I didn't forget what they are. And I try to get a lot of these different long-term projects because I, that means means I'll live forever. So I've got a new project. This is going to be really kind of interesting, which is Tolstoy or Dostoevsky. It's it's going to be a sub a sub theme of the uh, of the classical gas uh, series. I want to salute everybody here with our our Manhattan floral pattern floral pattern uh, martini glass, like just like Philip Marley used is, and we're we're talking about um, whether whether we should read Dostoevsky or Tolstoy. Now, we only have a few ideas here at the bathtub. And we do a certain kind of compare and contrast things. We have now three types of compare and contrast um, uh, structures for our our, our talks. One is, if you like Tolstoy, then you'll really like Dostoevsky. We do that talk every once in a while. You know, so, If you like so-and-so, you might like so-and-so. I don't think you can say that. I think that you could actually really like Tolstoy and really hate Dostoevsky. So we can't really do that with Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. And then the other one we do, which we did last week with uh, Douglas Adams and Robert Sheckley, is we could say Tolstoy, no, and then... Dostoevsky, yes, or vice versa, but I don't think that's fair. So what I'm referring to here is this is a book I read about like 20 years ago by George Steiner. It was called Tolstoy or Dostoevsky. And his theme was not, the point of the book was not you should like one or the other or one was good and one sucked. His thing was about how they were very different writers. They were both really interesting and they were both enjoyable but the, they appealed to different parts of our natures and there were, there were different times in our lives when we liked one and we didn't like the other. I thought I thought it was kind of interesting. I think it really works well with Tolstoy and Dostoevsky because here they were kind of contemporaries in a way, and they're often compared as major Russian novelists and so forth. But they're very very different writers, and you could really enjoy one and not and not the other, and vice versa. I read a lot of Dostoevsky when I was, he was like one of the first major writers. When I was a kid, I probably read Steinbeck was one of the first major writers, and Hemingway and Fitzgerald, all those typical American classics. And the first foreign classics I read were you know, probably Flaubert and then Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. And Dostoevsky was the first one and the one who I really loved when I was like 16 or 17. Um, when you're 16 or 17, I think he's kind of great, Dostoevsky. I think he's just brilliant. And Notes from Underground is a perfect example because it's about this kind of enraged, angry 20s, 30s character who feels who's everything. He's always angry about things, and then he, one minute he's angry, the next minute he's passionate about something. And it's he's kind of assaulting the reader. He just starts off yelling at the reader about how angry he is and how this upsets him and that upsets him. And it, it kind of there's a lot of that stuff that's in our adolescence, you know, this, the kind of rage and passion for things. And there was a lot of that in Dostoevsky. So I read all these Dostoevsky books. I read most. I probably read all the late Dostoevsky novels, except I never. I, I don't think I finished The Possessed for some reason. But anyway, I, I loved him when I was a young kid, and then I read some Tolstoy, and I really enjoyed Tolstoy as well. But then, in, in sort of the, the Steiner argument, as I got older, um, I started to like Tolstoy more, and I didn't. I lost. I never really read Tol Dostoevsky again. I haven't read him since I was like. Se I don't think I've read anything of his since I was seventeen or eighteen years old. So I decided I picked up. A f I had a few of these lying around. I had a lot. There's a new book coming out which I haven't read. It looks. It could be terrible and it could be good. It's called Dostoevsky in Love. I know nothing about it. I was playing with the idea of reviewing it, and maybe I still will. It's Alex Christofi. Anyway, it got me interested in thinking about Dostoevsky and. I want, I've always wanted to go back and read 
all, all those those books that I loved so much as a kid, like Brothers Karamazov and The Idiot and Crime and Punishment and all, all those wonderful books. And um, I decided I would go back to him and, and read him. And I used that as an excuse. Now, this is the other thing. I brought Akma up here, you know, where this is a, a shadowy, nebulous organization that operates at the periphery of our understanding. It's Amazon and the Washington Post can kiss my ass. Anything by Jeff, Jeff Bezos that he owns and the way the Washington Post and Jeff Bezos treats their workers is, is insidious and evil. But at the same time, I still keep buying stuff on my Kindle. I'm really sorry. I stopped buying lots of stuff. I don't buy any of my gift books from, from them anymore. But for the first time in about you know, several months, I bought an e-book because I have so many books on my Kindle, I can't give this up. And I bought a new a biography, an old biography, because I'd never read a good biography of, of um, Dostoevsky. I've read, read good biographies of Tolstoy. It's by Joseph Frank. It's from Princeton University Press. And it's called Dostoevsky, A Writer in His Time. It was, it was kind of an expensive Kindle book, $16, $18 or something. Joseph Frank wrote a five-volume biography of Dostoevsky. I had no intention ever of reading this. And I thought, you know, anyone who writes a five-volume biography of somebody, it, it's got to be kind of exhausting. And this this was a, com you know, they brought the compilation of those five volumes. And so I bought it. And I thought I'd check it out because it was considered the best. I think it's a wonderful biography. So Joseph Frank's one-volume biography of Dostoevsky is a great read. I'm only about one-tenth of the way through it. But I'm loving it. I really enjoy it. He set he sets him in historical context. He talks about the man. He uses lots of personal uh, letters and, and lots of framing letters and narratives of people who knew Dostoevsky, because I kind of always grown up since loving him under the impression that he was kind of an unpleasant man. And so far, what I'm getting out of this book is he's he wasn't as unpleasant as I sort of thought, and as you might think when you read books like uh, Notes from Underground. So anyway, I'm reading him again. The book I read last, this past few days, I enjoyed so much. I read this. I loved it when I was 16. Notes from Underground is an incredible short novel. It was one of the one of the first books he wrote after. He went to prison. Many of you may know he went to prison for being involved with a rebellion. I think it was called the Petrushevsky Rebellion. I can't remember. One of these kind of radical uh, resistances to uh, the, the czar and all that. And he uh, was sent to... Uh, Siberian prison camp for many years, and then he was forced in the military. So he he lost like ten years of his life and his career. And then he came out. And he wrote this. One of the books he wrote was Notes from Underground. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I I, I want to keep these a bit short, but I do want to do a lot of Dostoevsky over the next few weeks or months, and start with him, and then just kind of take this as an open invitation to read Tolstoy and Dostoevsky because they're both wonderful writers. It's about a guy who's just totally angry. Underground, he's kind of hidden away. He's like a he's a low rung, like most Dostoevsky characters or Gogol characters. He's a low rung civil servant type character. Works in some office, and he's always broke. And he has, you know, his his servant. He pays some servant. His servant looks down on him. He feels like his servant looks down on him and treats him really badly. And he's always angry, and yet he's filled with passion for life. And and that's such a typical expression in, in Dostoevsky, this divided soul, this the person who's just who wants to who wants to love life and yet is just so broke and so angry about everything. Anyway, it, it's the first third of this book are just his reflections on human life and the impossibility of having sensible human society. I've got to say, Al, the whole time I was reading it, it just sounded like all those nuts going into the the Capitol building. I just kept seeing them. All, he's just he's describing people who who hate rationality, who hate being told to do the sensible thing, who hate being told that they have to behave in a certain way, and that it's so inimical, inimical, inimical to human nature to be told how to be, even when you're being told the right things. And he writes quite eloquently and angrily about these characters. I mean, Nietzsche obviously would have loved this guy. It's very similar to, to Nietzsche's arguments. And he, one, I just want to read a couple quick passages. At one point he says, reason is nothing but reason and satisfies only the rational side of man's nature, while will is a manifestation of the whole life. 
this desire to just show that you have control over your life and break into some stupid building and throw and, and steal somebody's laptop and that makes you feel like you're alive and it's not rational it has nothing to do with science it has nothing to do with reason and he really the, the whole first third of this book really is about these characters and the type of people and the problem you have in human society that that there that all people have we all identify with this we can all identify with it so there's a real philosophical argument at the middle at the beginning of this book which i really enjoyed reading and I don't want to read too much more of it, except maybe just there was one other passage I thought was. Um, he says he says uh, a man a man who's who's frustrated will launch a curse upon the world, and as only man can curse, it is his privilege. The primary distinction between him and other animals: only man or human beings can curse at the world. Animals just have to take it. Human beings can be angry about it. It may be by his curse alone he will attain his object. That is, convince himself that he is a man and not a piano key. He uses this little metaphor all through the first third of this book. That he's not just a note on the scale. He's not some, some, some quantifiable piece of information. And, and you know, it is something we all, it's particularly when we're teenagers, when we're adolescents, I think we really understand that kind of rage, that kind of anger, that it... Desire to impress the world and make make the world ours in a way. He write and then this guy just got he's gotten older. The narrator of Notes from Underground has gotten old and and he's still angry. And the last two thirds of the book are him going to some meet some friends of his from school who all think he's an asshole, and he wants to prove to them how much he how important he is and he just makes himself makes an idiot of himself and then he's apologizing and then he's angry and then he meets this prostitute who he ends up with because he just gets so upset and then he wants to he wants to he wants to be a good person so that she'll remember him so he tries to say nice things to her it's it's amazing this this desire again it really reminded me of these lost morons who, who we're gonna we see so much in our, our society now whether they're on uh, the news, these terrible talk shows, whether it's MSNBC or Fox News, or these nuts running around with trying to stop vaccination centers, the desire to just exert themselves, and they don't care about anything else. It's an incredible piece of writing and, and thinking. And, and Dostoevsky is one of the few writers who I do recall reading who does both, who tells you stories about characters that interest you and... and um, and involves you in them, and, that, and yet he's still getting you thinking about stuff. I went straight on and read a book I haven't read. I'm going to re talk about this in the next episode, uh, which is House of the Dead, which is based on on his on Dostoevsky's uh, period in this this prison camp in Siberia. The first third is amazing. It's an amazing book. I I I I, I was told to read it many times in my life, and I, I think I tried it and I couldn't get into it. But it's a beautiful book, and it's about trying to understand and try to to live through this nightmare of being in his prison and these people, you're dealing with the most horrific people. And he sees something come something come kind of saintly in some of them. And it really I don't I don't know what Dostoevsky was really like, and I'm gonna continue reading this this excellent, excellent biography by uh, who did I say his name was? Um, Joseph Frank, which I recommend hi highly and try not to buy it like I did through the stupid Amazon people. Those people are horrible. Jeff Bezos and the Washington Post can kiss my ass. Anyway, those we're going to talk more about them. I'm really enjoying reading Dostoevsky. I'm enjoying him as much, if not more, than when I was a kid. And so we'll do more and more of him. And, and eventually, you know, if I live forever, we're going to do all of their books. We're just going to do them all. And, and we'll, 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 enjoy it. we'll enjoy it. Take care. Should I leave you with this? Happy bathing. Bye.